Hi everyone, welcome back to the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we are working on this piece that's behind me. and It's a super cute little piece. Um, it does have a black marble top on it. I knew I wanted to leave that. It's in really good condition. It's actually a pretty marble, so I'm going to leave that. Um, I took my inspiration for this one from the transfer that I used on this, and I'm also going to bring in a decoupage paper from Redesign with Prima that kind of ties these colors together. So I do that quite a lot. When I'm not sure what color direction to go, I will take a product that I want to use and I'll pull my color inspiration from there. And that's what I did on this one. I love how these colors came together. I used Wiseau paint. I also used some Redesign with Prima molds on this one. The transfer of course the paper is going to go on here and this is kind of a really pretty paint technique it actually feels like suede so i'm going to call it my suede technique it's got a really light texture but it's a very casual texture and you just want to run your hand over it but it's not an overt texture so i'm excited to play with a little bit of texture a really cool paint technique and decorate this piece up really well uh, we did this one live so if you want to catch those videos those are up on my youtube channel under that live tab and you can see this one coming together, but we're going to edit that video and make it go fast. Um, and let's go ahead and put this piece together and get started. Here's where I started on this piece. Overall, it had a really outdated finish, this kind of red with a little bit of painting on it. It kind of had a little bit of an Asian vibe, but I'm going to totally change the direction of this piece. I started out by removing all the hardware and giving it a thorough cleaning. And I'm going to go ahead and use a spray primer on this one just for the sake of time. I'm spraying this in 123 Primer from Zinsser. I do like this as far as spray primers go. It's usually the one I use. It gets great coverage. This primer is going to help cover over this red color and give me a unified finish to apply my paint over the top of. And it's also going to help my paint bond to the surface of my piece. With my piece completely primed, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. And I do want to add some molds to the front of this piece to sort of accentuate the hardware. It's got a fairly simple front. Once I've got the primer on, I can see that. And so I'm going to use these molds from Redesign with Prima and cast them in some amazing casting resin from Alumalite. And then I'm going to use these as my hardware backs. And this is going to give me some detail to the front that this piece is drastically missing. For my casting resin, I mix equal parts of A and B in a silicone cup, and then I'm going to go ahead and pour them into my mold. I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes, and these molds are going to fully cure. Once they turn to white, they'll be ready to pop out of my silicone mold and apply to my piece. I do need to move fairly quickly when I'm pouring this resin with that fully cure time of 10 minutes. I've got about two minutes to get it fully pour poured into these molds. I'm pouring three molds at a time here. Um, I'm only going to end up using two on the front of this piece. And then I guide all my resin into any areas of the mold that didn't get filled and I'm going to let this cure. With my molds done, I'm going to go ahead and start adding some paint to the body of this piece over top of my fully dried primer. I also worked on this piece on some live videos, so if you're interested in seeing some more detail on applying the paint and other finishes to this piece, catch those live videos also available on my YouTube channel. This color is called Vintage Duck Egg, and I think it's beautiful. It's one of those blues that's incredibly neutral, can be used in a variety of scenes, but overall I'm going for sort of a French country feel on this piece, and this color is going to be perfect. I'm going to give this piece an almost suede finished texture and it's a very light subtle texture but it's absolutely beautiful. Once I brush my paint over the body of my piece I'm going to come back with my Klingon brush and I'm just going to add a light texture by stippling into the paint. This is going to give a light texture just to the paint itself. I didn't add any additive to it. It's just going to give a very subtle texture. You can see how beautiful this vintage duck egg color is. Moving around the piece, I'm going to do the same thing on my second coat. So on my second coat, I'm applying the paint with that same stick building texture. I do feel my brush fairly heavy. I want a little bit of texture in this paint finish. So I want a little bit of excess paint on my brush so that when I pull it away, it sort of creates this dimpling pattern in the paint. For my second coat, I'm also going to add in a couple of other colors. So I'm going to use a little bit of weather vane around the edges. This is going to give me the look of an aged edge. So I'm using a chip brush to apply this, and I'm going to use the same stippling motion. So I came back with one of my Klingon brushes once I had that paint brushed into the crevice, and I'm going to work that into the wet vintage duck egg around the edges. It's not a full blend because I'm using that stippling texture. It's going to give me this sort of moody look with a really light texture to it. I use that dark gray around the edges and then in the center of the piece, I'm going to add a little bit of Isles Avenue, which is a soft creamy ivory color. And I'm going to do the same thing, working that into the vintage duck egg, just using the same stippling motion. 
This is gonna give me some variation in my paint. It's gonna look like it's a little bit worn, like I've got a little bit of a highlight in the center. It's gonna give it some character. This is also a great paint technique option. If you struggle with blending, using the stippling motion, creating that texture, getting a nice uneven blend, this is a beautiful way to do it. With my paint fully dry, I wanna add some black wax accents to around the moldings and some of the details on this piece. So I just used a small artist brush and I'm gonna um, brush in some black wax into the crevices. And then I'm gonna use a slightly larger brush to just feather out some of that black wax around the edges, just for a light, soft, shaded look over the weather vane. The layering of the paint with a little bit of wax over the top just emphasizes those dark areas. With my black wax accents on this, I did pull my inspiration for this piece from a transfer by Redesign with Prima. This is a new transfer in the maxi size, and this was the perfect size for this piece. It's not an overly large piece. And so I did cut up my transfer, and I'm going to apply it to these two doors. This transfer is really nice to use because it has a right and a left hand side, so I can take what I'm putting on this door and I can mirror it on the opposite door as well. I actually pulled my color inspiration for this transfer. So all of the colors that I'm using are colors that also appear in this transfer. I want it to be fairly subtle looking. So I'm using a tone on tone look, which means that I'm putting the transfer over a color that's the same color that's in the transfer itself. Once I find my placement for the transfer, I'm gonna rub over the top of the entire thing using the stick that comes in the package with the transfer. Then I'm gonna rub over it with my finger, and lastly I come over it with the Redesign with Prima polishing pad, and this just seats the transfer into the piece. Let's give some extra attention to those Redesign with Prima molds that I used. This is one, and you can see I drilled out the center because that's where my knob is going to go. I'm gonna add the same black wax accents around the edges of the mold that I did around the edges of my piece. So I just brush on with an artist brush, writing the edges of that mold. This is just gonna add a little bit of shadowing around the edges to kind of bring it out from the background a little bit. I wanna keep this look fairly soft and aged. It's got that very light, soft texture to it. And then this wax is going to add a real softness around these molds. The other option would be glaze, but glaze gives a cleaner, a little bit more harsh line. And so the wax is gonna have that softness around it. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of gold decor wax over the top of this mold, just using the tip of my finger. This is my favorite recipe for setting off mold. So I've got the dark in the background, I've got my body color over the top, and then that little bit of gilding wax gives me three layers of color that always gives my molds extra dimension. I also think the signs of a good mold are how it takes decor wax, and this one is beautiful. It's got just the right amount of detail. It's got a ton of character. I really love this mold. So here's how my molds look. Once I've got all the accents added, I added a little bit of gold decor wax around the edges of my piece too. Now let's go ahead and add some paper to the insides of these doors. I also use this paper to kind of pull my inspiration from, and this is what I like to do is take products that pair really well together and complement each other. And this paper and the Minty Roses transfer have a lot of similar colors in them. So I was able to use that transfer on the front of this piece and the paper inside the doors, and they work together extremely well. In both of these accents, you can see all my color inspiration. The background color is my vintage duck egg. I've got that weather vane that I use for shading, and then the Isles Avenue is that cream color, and all of those appear in the paper. I added a little bit of Wiseall matte varnish to the underside of this paper. Once I've got a nice thick coat on there, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my paper over top, and then I'm gonna use a razor knife to trim it along the edges. With my paper fully trimmed, I'm gonna go ahead and add a coat of my Wiseall matte varnish over the top of this piece. And this is going to pull through that clear coat from underneath and it's gonna seal it from over top too. I'm gonna to let this clear coat dry and I will apply additional clear coats as needed until I get a nice smooth finish over the top of this paper. The clear coat serves as my adhesive and it's also gonna serve as my protection for this paper. The other thing I need to do on this paper is go ahead and trim out the slots for the hinges on the side. So I'm just gonna use a very sharp razor knife and I'm gonna cut out those areas using the tip of my razor knife around the edges of my hinges. My hinges do have that vintage duck egg paint on them. So when they dry, they're gonna look like they match the background. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just brush my clear coat over top, make sure it's nice and smooth. I'm gonna do the same process over on my second door. I do like to always do the insides of the doors. I think it's a nice fun surprise when you open the piece and the back sides of the doors are done as well, but I'm not gonna paint the inside of the cabinet. I do save that till last and then I'll clean up the inside of the cabinet and that'll be one of my finishing touches. 
With my paper done, I did lightly sand the edges of the paper just to make sure I get a nice smooth edge flush with the edge of my piece. Any edges that that razor knife didn't cut off, I just go ahead and get with a sander afterwards. And now I'm going to apply clear coat to the body of my piece. I spray a lot of my clear coats, but you don't always have to spray clear coat. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and brush on my Wiseau matte varnish over the top of my entire piece. I'm just using one of my Klingon brushes and I'm going to make sure that I brush in nice, long, even linear strokes. I'm just doing uh, thin coats and I'll do two coats over the body of this piece. The top on this one is actually a marble so I don't need to um, clear coat the top at all. I'm just going to do uh, some Wise Owl furniture salve over the top of that stone and on the inside as well and that's going to give a nice polish to the stone and a polish to the wood on the inside. For brushing my clear coat onto these cubbies I do cut in around those corners on all the sides and then I'm going to brush on the um, insides of it in nice long even linear strokes as well. Clear coat can be brushed, it can be applied with a sponge, and it can also be sprayed. So these are three great options. I spray a lot of my clear coats just for the sake of time. In this case, I love the texture on this one. And so I went ahead and just brushed my clear coat over the top of it and it worked great. If you're going to brush clear coats, I do recommend using a good quality synthetic brush like my Klingon S50 here. And then I do keep one of my Klingons that's just for clear coat because when you use them for paint and primers and things like that, it can tend to wear your brushes. So if you have the option to keep one that's nice and clean just for clear coat, it's a great idea. I went ahead and left this section of video in here because I think it's a great way to show you guys how much clear coat um, deepens the color of paint. So you can see when I first started that I had two sections of paint, one that was lighter and one that was darker. Once I add that clear coat over the top, it just adds some extra depth and dimension to my paint. So sealing your paint will darken it a little bit. All right, and with my clear coat nice and dry and my uh, stone all polished with my furniture salve, this piece is done. What do you guys think? I love that minty roses transfer. These molds added so much detail. This piece is gorgeous. I staged it, of course, with the Mona Lisa because it's got those blues in the background, a little bit of pompous grass and some natural wood. This piece came out great. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's a lot of fun techniques in this piece. As always, you can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please click, click that subscribe button for weekly tutorials here at Brush by Brandy on YouTube.